This is the first problem in a practice exam that we're going to do for the computational tools course on Excel. And we have on the Excel side, if you come to this address right here, if you come to the Excel and VBA, you see the material. But if you go up just a little bit, you'll see exam review. And so if you select exam review, you'll see this Excel exam right here, the PDF version, and also a workbook. So you'll need this workbook right here. Go ahead and do save. And um, you know, unzip it. Okay, just extract all, unzip that workbook. And we're going to need this um, this file to start to work with. Okay, and if you want to just go ahead and put it on your desktop, for example, you can do that. And uh, we'll open it up. And uh, we're going to put the first one. Okay, the very first problem is going to be here in reaction. Second one is going to be population data, population analysis, and then linear solve. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, these three problems together, but starting with the first one. Let's go back to the first problem statement. Um, this one is about modeling uh, with differential equations and also parameter estimation. So it includes two topics that we've covered in the Excel material. Problem one, we're simulating a reversible chemical reaction as follows. Okay, so this uh, symbol right here means that the reaction can go forward and it can also go in reverse. And so we have our forward rate right here and this is our reverse rate. Okay, so K2 uh, B squared and this one is K1A. And so we just write a species balance for the first one and then a species balance for the second one as well. Okay, so A and B denote the species concentrations in moles per liter. Okay, the initial concentrations are A1 equals 1 moles per liter and B, um, or sorry, A0 is 1 and B0 is 0. So we start with initially A and no B. And we have these values for K1 and K2. Okay, those are going to be initial guesses. Uh, for part A that we're just going to use for part A, but then in part B we're going to try to estimate the K1 and K2 to try to best fit some data. And then we'll also plot uh, the data as well. So let's go ahead and just open up our Excel workbook again. And um, in here we need to put a little bit of information about our problem that we were given in the statement. So the first thing that we need is to uh, first of all just go ahead and and uh, there's a little bit of room up here at the top and you can see point 0.2 and point 0.1 those are the initial guesses they're already filled in as well as the initial concentration of A and the initial concentration of B is already there okay and uh, what we want to do is use uh, something like Euler's method there's a hint here on Euler's method on how to set up the differential equations Okay, so there is Euler's method right there. Now, if you remember from Euler's method, we're just going to take A of I plus 1 minus AI divided by delta T. That's our time difference. And that's going to be equal to the right-hand side of the equation, K1A plus K2B uh, squared. And then I'm just going to solve for uh, this value. These are going to be I's as well. Uh, meaning the prior time step. This is going to be the next time step for A. And I'm just going to solve for that. And that's what this Euler's uh, method is right here. Okay, so AI plus 1 is going to be equal to negative K1AI plus K2BI uh, squared. Okay, times delta T plus AI. And there is our formula that we're going to use for um, you know, inserting into this uh, worksheet. And we're going to do the same thing for the equation below as well. We'll just apply the Euler's method. So let me go ahead and move this over to the side. And for A, it's going to be equal to, um, let me go ahead and put it in parentheses here, negative, and then I'm going to select K1. Now I want to hit F4 right here to make it a static reference. You'll see the, the uh, dollar signs go in there. And then I'm going to do times the prior value of A plus K2. Hit the F4. And then times the uh, prior value of B. And we're going to square that. 
and then multiplied by the uh, delta t. Okay, so I'm going to do the time difference right there, plus, and then let's do the a, the prior a value. Now don't hit the F4 right there because we want that to drag down. Okay, so we can see that it went down to 0.9 concentration. The reaction started happening. And if I double click, once I um, get this little black uh, crosshair, if I double click there, then it's going to fill down. Now let me just check one of the formulas by selecting uh, maybe B10, opening that. Now you can see that it's referencing this one that's blank right here. Now don't worry about that because we're going to fill in the B next, but you can see that it looks like um, it's referencing the correct, uh, the correct values. Okay, let's do B now. Um, let's just go over to B and see if we can just uh, do this one uh, just by applying um, the Euler's method as well. And so this one is just going to be the right-hand side of the equation. So it's going to be 2 times K1 times the concentration of A minus 2 times the concentration uh, K2. Hit F4 there whenever you want that to be static. Times the concentration of B squared. Okay, then times our delta T. And plus the initial concentration, or the uh, prior concentration of B. Okay, so there, is go there it's going to change the concentration of A now as I uh, start producing B. Uh, so you can see right here in the first one, the A went down to, you know, lost about 0.1, but B was able to gain 0.2. And that makes sense, uh, you know, with this equation over here um, that we had uh, for every A molecule that we have, we produce two B molecules. So the concentration uh, should go up for B. Okay, so let's go back to, um, let's go back here. Okay, so now we have our predicted and measured values. And uh, one of the things that it asks you to do in part C, but I, I think I'd like to do that right now, is just go ahead and plot the two, just so we can see um, you know, the difference between the uh, concentrations that we predict and the measured concentrations. Okay, and we'll put time on the uh, x-axis and concentration moles per liter on the y-axis. So let's do that one right away because we're going to be comparing these two in just a little bit. So if I um, just take this and I'm going to change the uh, these titles a little bit. Okay, I'll put predicted and predicted and mez. Okay, so I'm just going to change the titles there. Uh, one of the nice things about changing those titles is I can just select this. Okay, hit the, uh, hold, go to the A6, hit the shift key, and then the right arrow, and it'll go over uh, to D6, and then hit the control and the shift, and then hit down, and it'll select all of your data for you. Or you can select that with the mouse as well. And then go to insert, and then I'm going to come over here to my scatter plot, and just insert this one um, scatter plot. Okay, I'm going to delete the title, um, and I'm going to move this up to the top as well, just so I can see it just a little bit better. So you can just kind of grab it and drag it up. And then if you select the plot, and then come over to uh, Design up here at the top, you can see this Design, and then Add Chart Element. We're going to add um, you know, a primary axis, and then we'll add a chart element we'll go up primary horizontal okay so vertical and horizontal and this one is going to be uh, concentration moles per liter and this one is um, let me go back and see what we wanted there time in seconds okay so this one's going to be time I'm going to capitalize that time in seconds okay so we have uh, the difference uh, between A and B Okay, now we lost our, it looks like, oh, there it is right there. I'm just going to go ahead and move this up into my plot. Just give me a little bit more room. 
on the bottom side, okay, and maybe move this legend uh, someplace where it isn't really in the way. Okay, so uh, now we have a good, um, you know, pretty good predictions here, but maybe we want to change the values of K1 and K2 to better match, um, you know, better match B, the concentration of B, the measured B values, which are the gray line there. So we could change these manually. You know, maybe we'd say uh, 0 0.15, um, and maybe we need to go a little bit higher on this one, 0 0.3, and we could kind of guess and check if we wanted to, but that might take us a while to get, uh, you know, the best value. So let's go ahead and try to set up an optimization problem now to try to uh, minimize the, um, I'm going to do the squared error here. Okay, and just do the difference between uh, the predicted and the measured value. And then fill this one down and you'll see the squared error between those two. And then the sum of the uh, squared errors, SSE, sum of squared errors. I'm going to put that right here and equal sum. If you forget what a function is supposed to be, uh, you can always come to formulas and then insert function um, and there's the sum uh, but if you didn't know what you needed you can come to insert or sorry formulas uh, insert and then you can see some of the common ones or you can type a brief description of what you'd like to do and it can often find it for you so if you forget if it was like uh, you know add or or something like that you can uh, search for it right there. I'm just going to select again. I'm going to hit contr uh, Control and Shift, and then hit down, and that's going to select E7 to E27, and that's and I hit Enter, and then I have the sum of my squared errors. Now, if I come into Data, and then Solver. Um, now, if you don't have Solver, again go to File Options, and then Add-ins. Well, here on the right, Excel add-ins right there, click go, and then make sure that that solver is selected. Okay, you want to make sure that's there. And then go to data solver, and we're going to set my objective function. It guessed that it was going to be E2. Just go ahead and leave that, and we're going to minimize that. Don't set it to a value of zero. You won't get a, a feasible solution. And then we want to change certain cells. Okay, we want to change these two right here B2 and B3 now just make sure for your problem uh, if you want to select that or unselect it I think we want to select it in this case we want to make them positive and then we'll click solve okay we're going to go ahead and keep the solver solution so we can see that it came up with um, you know different values to minimize this sum of squared errors and you can see also here that it's a much better fit overall for the B predicted to the measured values Okay, let's go back to our problem and just see if we've answered all of the questions now. Okay, um, does the data suggest the reaction is irreversible? Okay, K2, does K2 go to zero when we plot it? So we'd say no because we had a K2 value uh, right here of 0.2 and that was the best fit there. So it means it's, it's a, re a reversible reaction. Uh, one of the things that we can also do is just look at the R squared um, of our fit if we'd like to. RSQ. This isn't asked for in the problem, but I would just select uh, the known Y's or the known predicted or measured values. Doesn't matter which one you uh, select there. And then you select the other one. Okay. And then you can get an R squared value. So that's a very good fit, a 0.99 for the R squared value. So you can do uh, some basic statistics as well um, with this data. Okay, so I think that concludes uh, this problem. Um, you know, we're gonna go on to the next one now. Um, we'll just go ahead and uh, continue and uh, this one will be a data analysis problem.